Hi everybody. I had props. I bought something wrong from Amazon, but they are literally red flags. They were for something in the yard, but I bought the wrong thing. So I thought that these would be a good prop for, you know, being somebody who talks about red flags and partners. And I just did a little reel on some red flags and they were red flags for being sex negative. And I talked about being easily disgusted, thinking that a sex life was just bad only due to all of your exes one by one without understanding that, you know, sex drive goes down over time. This is particularly true if you're dating somebody older. Young people don't know anything. But if you're dating somebody who's already been divorced and they attribute the entirety of the sex life ending to their ex, well, guess what? You're going to be next. And um, and also no fantasies or no masturbation. That's pretty much a red flag for having low libido. So you could ask me about other red flags because I think this is a pretty cool prop I have here. Or you could just say hi um, or anything. Or you could ask me any of your relationship questions. I hope you guys, uh, look, I have more of them. So I could talk about multiple red flags because people can ignore any number of red flags you know, it could be a whole red flag factory. So I talked about three. I can certainly talk about others, red flags that your sex life will go down. Uh, one, another one, besides the three I already talked about, is that you're not really having a lot of sex. And people diminish this one, like, so much. It's the honeymoon stage. They're not even doing it, like, multiple times a week, even when they're young. Like, even when they just started and met each other. It's only like once a week. So then how is it ever going to, like, what's it going to go up? Of course not. You know, it's going to go down by so much. So actually paying attention to things like this can be very, very useful, obviously, if you're trying to find a partner who's compatible. There's a million other red flags that you guys can ask about. But when, when you remember, when you go back with a therapist and you talk about the origin of your relationship, it can really be mind-blowing to be like, man, I really missed a lot of stuff. But it can also help you not blame that person, especially if you have to co-parent with them. Instead of saying, oh, bait and switch, you know, the mantra of the manosphere, you can say, oh, they were never very sexual. They were easily grossed out. We weren't actually doing it all that much anyway. And right after the biological dopamine-fueled honeymoon stage ended, it kind of ended, you know? And it, that can really help a lot of people make peace, just like I tell women. Okay, so for women, what's some red flags that the man isn't going to be romantic afterwards? He's not that romantic. I mean, for real, like even in the in the honeymoon stage, yeah, he plans a couple dates, this and that, but he's not as romantic as like your friend's boyfriends, right? Another one, he's not very verbal. So how are you going to get these, uh, you know, cute notes and texts and all these things from a guy who doesn't really like to talk that much, right, from the beginning? You know, there's a meme like, is he really smart, funny, and romantic, or is he just tall? You know, and insert tall for whatever the woman likes. If she finds him cute, then she's like, in the honeymoon stage, she's like, oh, that's okay that he's not this, that, and the other. But there are these red flags waving, right? And what are some others? He was never that romantic with his ex-girlfriends. This is not like you found a diamond in the rough. This common, common um, human cognitive error there. Oh, it's more important if he did it with me for the first time or if she did it with me for the first time. No, the man's 30 years old and he's never told you really about anything romantic he ever did for his exes. How's it going to be with you, right? Like either he has that component or he doesn't. The same as I tell men, if she never enjoyed sex before you, unless she's like 18 years old, how is she going to be, you know, doing it with you? That's a porn fantasy. That's not reality. So I hope you guys like these props, you know, and you could think about them in your mind's eye when you're thinking about your relationship and whether you're really just blaming your partner for stuff that they showed you at the beginning. Because that's 99% of cases, you know. There's a life, a, some lifetime movie type of stuff that happens to some people with sociopaths where they're like intentionally misled. The guy turns out to have a whole other family, whatever. Most people are not doing that. Most people are showing who they are from the very beginning. If you have any questions, now would be your time to ask. I hope that you appreciate this. Um, certainly got a lot more viewers than usual. 
please do send your likes and your loves and you can ask me questions about red flags or about anything else. And it's really, really important to be mindful when you go back and you think about the origin story of your relationship so that you do not end up saying that your partner is the devil and, a, and you're a victim and thinking in this black and white, you know, tragic soap opera way that precludes any deeper self-examination that could potentially allow you to have some insight into who to pick and who not to pick next time, right? So say hello if you're watching. Send me your likes and loves. Remember, guys, if you ever need a therapist or a coach, uh, think about my practice, Best Life Behavioral Health. And you can always reach out to schedule. We get back to you right away because we know how important that is if you are in the mood. Sure, yeah, thank you for the positive feedback. This guy is the best audience member. <laughs> it's many flags, Sure, yeah. You're late to the party here, man. Which is probably why nobody was talking to me because you weren't here yet. See, look, I got, you know how many of these I have? I thought they were going to be little adhesive flags because we put up this thing in the backyard and I didn't want people to trip, but they're these type of flags. So instead of just returning them, I figured I would make a point for people that are struggling with their relationship. <laughs> so, you know, hopefully, hopefully that got anybody's attention. Um, I do have to go in a few, but if anybody does have a question, especially about red flags, which is the the theme of the day, then I can answer them. I'll just keep them up because maybe people like to see them. Uh-oh, these two. This is you get what you pay for, man. $7.99. Oh, here we go. All right, good. Um, again, if, any, if, if you guys want to work on your relationships, I just had a little video about help rejecting complainers. Don't be a help rejecting complainer. That's another red flag, by the way. If the person that you're dating is always saying that they're victimized, they have problems with friends, they have problems with work, they have problems with family, they have problems with everybody except you. Well, guess what? You just didn't fall off the pedestal yet. They're going to have problems with you very, very soon, called as soon as the honeymoon stage remits. So these people, men and women, who go in and find these wounded birds to date, eh, they have problems with everybody, but now that I'm here to save them and to rescue them, it's going to be better. It's not going to be better. It's going to be better for one and a half to three years until their dopamine wears off. And then you will fall from grace as well. Shoria says, which attachment style is more of a help-rejecting complainer? You tell me, man, you've been studying with me for a long time now, Grasshopper. Why don't you guess? I bet you can guess. Try. If not, I'll tell you. But I bet you can guess, sure, yeah. I have faith in you. If not, don't worry. I'll just tell you. <laughs> but go ahead. I want to see if you could get. We're waiting for sure, yeah, in this round of Jeopardy. I'm waiting. I'm not going to answer because I know you could get this. If you're... Give your thinking cap on. I feel like you could get this one, sure, yeah. I could give you a hint. Tell me if you want a hint. Like, call a friend. I'll give you a hint. I only have two minutes, but I don't want to tell you because I feel like you can guess. Do, 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 do. Seems like a lot of women I date complain a lot. <laughs> right, right. That's true. Okay, fine. Well, remember your upbringing. I'm sure you don't forget it often. But I remember it as well. So you might be drawn to do 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 fearful avoidant women. The ones whose childhoods were also difficult because you match up on that without even kind of knowing it consciously. But fearful avoidant, that's the most dramatic type. And it's the type that gets them right. Anxious and avoidant complain for different reasons. But who then complains the most? The combinatorial anxious and avoidant in one style. Fearful avoidant. Fearful avoidant. So the fearful avoidant type, they want closeness, but they're scared of it. So they pursue it, but they act so difficult by, for example, complaining so much that nobody can really get close to them, thereby confirming the way that they think about the world. You don't date, you don't date those anymore, but maybe you used to. Hopefully not. You know, some people are just negative. So with depression can come some help rejecting complaining too. 
So I don't know, man. You should probably join the group again and tell me more so you don't go down the wrong path and date women that I don't think you should be dating. But thank you, Shoria. And thanks to everybody for participating in my fun game. And I will talk to you guys soon. i got to go to a client. And I hope that you all have a wonderful whatever day this is, Wednesday. Bye-bye.